The global goat population continues to grow and is now over 1 billion. The number of goats raised primarily for milk production is also growing, due to expanding demand. Most of the world dairy goat production and consumption is in Asia, but a global view of the dairy goat sector reveals important lessons about building successful modern dairy goat industries. The most organized market for goat milk is found in Europe, especially in France. The European goat sector is specialized for milk production, mostly for industrial cheese making, while also supporting traditional on-farm manufacturing. Government involvement is significant in sanitary regulation, research, extension, support for local producer organizations, and markets, and ensures safety and quality. Nonetheless, producers are still vulnerable to market fluctuations. New dairy goat industries are developing in countries without a long goat milk tradition, such as China, the United States, and New Zealand, due to rising consumer demand, strong prices, and climate change. The mix of policies, management and markets varies widely, but regardless of the country, the dairy goat sector thrives when producers have access to markets, and the tools and skills to sustainably manage their livestock and natural resources. These are most readily achieved through strong and inclusive producer organizations, access to technical services, and policies that enable the poor and marginalized groups to benefit from increasing demand. Blood, by definition, is a fluid that moves through the vessels of a circulatory system. In humans, it includes plasma, the liquid portion, blood cells, which come in both red and white varieties, and cell fragments called platelets. Plasma is the main component of blood and consists mostly of water, with proteins, ions, nutrients, and wastes mixed in. Red blood cells are responsible for carrying oxygen and carbon dioxide. Platelets are responsible for blood clotting. White blood cells are part of the immune system and function in immune response. Cells and platelets make up about 45% of human blood, while plasma makes up the other 55%. The diagram below shows red blood cells, white blood cells of different types, large, purple cells, and platelets. An ecosystem consists of all the living and non-living things in a specific natural setting. Plants, animals, insects, microorganisms, rocks, soil, water and sunlight are major components of many ecosystems. All types of ecosystems fall into one of two categories, terrestrial or aquatic. Terrestrial ecosystems are land-based, while aquatic is water-based. The major types of ecosystems are forests, grasslands, deserts, tundra, freshwater and marine. The word biome may also be used to describe terrestrial ecosystems which extend across a large geographic area, such as tundra. Keep in mind, however, that within any ecosystem, specific features vary widely. For instance, an oceanic ecosystem in the Caribbean Sea will contain vastly different species than an oceanic ecosystem in the Gulf of Alaska. Apart from pretty heavy professional photographic equipment, which includes tripods, protective camera cases, 
in case they're going underwater, and different types of lenses, from macro to wide angle, depending on the subject, they need to learn a lot about the landscape or an animal species they are about to photograph. Certain locations require special permits, and every animal leads a specific kind of life that a nature photographer is obliged to respect. They also often need to spend days in a single spot waiting for the right moment to occur, meaning their gear bag will also contain things like a tent, some food, and lots of warm, and camouflage, clothes. But then, from the winning combination of luck and skills, there comes that perfect shot we've all been waiting for, ready to evoke all kinds of emotions in its gazing beauty. Today human activities are constantly adding industrial, domestic and agricultural waste to groundwater reservoirs at an alarming rate. Groundwater contamination is generally irreversible that is once it is contaminated, it is difficult to restore the original water quality of the aquifer. Excessive mineralization of groundwater degrades water quality producing an objectionable taste, odor and excessive hardness. In modern IT, change management has many different guises. Project managers view change management as the process used to obtain approval for changes to the scope, timeline, or budget of a project. Infrastructure professionals consider change management to be the process for approving, testing, and installing a new piece of equipment, a cloud instance, or a new release of an application. ITIL, ISO 20000, PMP, PRINCE2, as well as other methodologies and standards, prescribe the process to gain approval and make changes to a project or operating environment. The Association of Change Management Professionals, ACMP, PROCI, the Innovation and Organizational Change Management Institute, IOCMI, and others view change management from an organizational perspective. While each group has its own approaches, frameworks and language, these groups all address the human side of change in organizational contexts. The lower Paleolithic culture is marked by the human ancestors belonging to the species Homo habilis and Homo erectus. The human ancestors flaked large stone blocks and designed various tools including hand axes. These tools, which are found in Africa, Asia, and Europe, are dated the earliest to about 1.8 million years ago. They made various tools such as hand axes and cleavers to meet their subsistence needs. These tools are also known as bifaces. These tools have physical symmetry and convey the human's cognitive, perception, skills. This culture is called the Lower Paleolithic culture. The hand axe tools are also known as Acheulean. This tool making tradition continued till 250,000 years to 60,000 years ago in India. Most oil and gas companies have a schedule of maintenance plan in place to curb and plan downtime. This is performed routinely in cycles according to a calendar-based timetable. 
This maintenance is done during planned maintenance outages and the non-critical assets are generally run to failure before maintenance. Therefore, critical assets have regular schedule of maintenance and non-critical ones have reactive maintenance. But routine maintenance may not be the answer, as different assets have very different requirements of maintenance and different individual sites also have different operation processes, environmental conditions, etc. Routine calendar-based maintenance is generally unnecessary. Research into electricity and magnetism dates back to the 1700s, but no one was ever able to put the whole picture together of how electromagnetism worked until James Clerk Maxwell published his treatise on electricity and magnetism in 1873. It was the first time anyone laid out a solid, mathematical case for the existence of electromagnetic waves. A few years later, German physicist Heinrich Hertz proved Maxwell's ideas through experimentation. Hertz however, never grasped the full potential of his discoveries. His interest in the matter was purely academic. When asked what his discovery meant, he responded, it's of no use whatsoever. Generators, inverters, and PV cells are the major products via which smart solar solutions are deployed. Out of these, the demand for PV cells is predicted to be significantly high in the years to come, which can primarily be ascribed to technological advancements. Innovations in the PV cell technology have enabled manufacturers to decrease the cost of these products, thereby facilitating their increasing adoption. In addition to this, Companies in the industry are making use of the triboelectric effect for the development of hybrid PV cells, which can generate electricity during rainy weather as well. The environmental conditions in poultry houses are a key factor in the growth of the birds. We cannot expect unhealthy birds to grow as per standard. Importantly hatched chick cannot maintain a proper body temperature without help. Hence monitoring key parameter and that on a real-time basis is important. There is increasing concern in the poultry industry with regard to high ambient temperatures. This concern may be attributed to rapid development of the industry with climate change and also to reduced performance and increased mortality of poultry specifically during summer. They resort to banting as temperatures increase which increased metabolic rate and evaporative cooling. Body temperatures must remain close to 41 degrees centigrade and increase beyond the regulated adverse results. Thereby the birds consume less food and convert the feed less efficiently. Arctic foxes have many features they have adapted to allow them to survive the harsh climate of the Arctic. They are fantastic burrowers, allowing them to tunnel their way under the snow to create dens where they seek refuge from the elements and stockpile food. They feed off birds, eggs, lemmings, voles, mice, carrion and shellfish, and hunts with their incredible hair and it allows them to locate their prey under the snow, they then leap to break the snow and gather the prey below. They're thick. 
Long fur is adapted to change seasonally becoming white or blue-gray in the winter to brown-gray in the summer, providing excellent camouflage. Its thickness keeps them alive as they have been known to survive temperatures as low as minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit. This coveted, beautiful fur has also been prized by trappers, who now farm arctic foxes in a large commercial industry. Fortunately, their numbers in the wild still range in the hundred thousand. They primarily live on the tundra or in northern wooded areas of Alaska, Canada, Greenland, Russia, Norway, Scandinavia and Iceland. Bear soil can be easily exposed to different types of erosion. Therefore, one of the primary measures for farmers to take to prevent unwanted depletion is afforestation. Whether the region is a flat or sloped surface, it is recommended to plant trees, grass, and shrubs that protect the area for winds, washouts, and prevent acidification. Another key preventive measure is that of crop rotation that presupposes farmers never let the soil lay bare. Speaking of water erosion, it can be mainly prevented by reducing tillage on fields that causes excessive soil compaction. A farmer can also build artificial water channels, called flumes, that have a function similar to drainage. Other approaches to save the land from excessive flooding involve building dams and embankments. Human behavior is complex. There are a number of underlying mechanisms involved in practically every decision, action, thought, or feeling or other measurable behavioral outcomes, and many of which do not necessarily line up with self-report or basic observations. Behind these decisions, actions, thoughts, and feelings, bodily processes can be found. These shape our responses. These processes aren't measured through methods such as self-report and observation but can be measured by biosensors. Biosensors can provide deeper insights into constructs like emotional intensity by measuring these underlying systems. Birds have always had a privileged place in human culture, mainly through myths and legends, such as that of Leda and the Swan, in Aesop's Fables, 6th century BC. It was only a matter of time until curiosity prompted studies of the natural history of birds, which was duly undertaken by Aristotle, 4th century BC. His history of animals not only contains many insightful comments based on accurate observation, but also some errors such as certain birds hiding rather than migrating. Aristotle's works were considered authoritative by naturalists well into the 19th century, Stresemann, 1975. The Roman writer Pliny elaborated on Aristotle's writings to create his own extremely successful natural history, Ad 77. After this, the study of birds did not blossom again until the Renaissance, some 15 centuries later.
Avocado is prized for its high nutrient value and is added to various dishes due to its good flavor and rich texture. It is the main ingredient in guacamole. These days, the avocado has become an incredibly popular food among health-conscious individuals. It's often referred to as a superfood, which is not surprising given its health properties. There are many types of avocado that vary in shape and color, from pear-shaped to round and green to black. They can also weigh anywhere from 8 ounces, 220 grams, to 3 pounds, 1.4 kg. The most popular variety is the Haas avocado. It's often called alligator pear, which is very descriptive, as it tends to be pear-shaped and has green, bumpy skin like an alligator. The yellow-green flesh inside the fruit is eaten, but the skin and seed are discarded. Avocados are very nutritious and contain a wide variety of nutrients, including 20 different vitamins and minerals. Carpenter bees bore through soft woods to lay eggs and protect their larvae as they develop. Female carpenter bees will chew a tunnel into a piece of wood to build a nest gallery. The bits of wood she chews and deposits outside the nest are called frass. The tunnel openings usually look about 1 or 2 inches deep, but they can be up to 10 feet long. These tunnels usually have several rooms where the bees hold their eggs and food. Carpenter bees do not pose a public health threat but they can do cosmetic damage to the wood where they build their nests. Carpenter bees are beneficial because they pollinate plants that are ignored by honeybees. The most natural tool for counting and calculating are the fingers. The hands can be used to represent large numbers. For arithmetic, among other things, shells and pebbles were used. There were different types of counting boards and bead frames. The chronological development goes from the Babylonian abacus to Greek and Roman calculating boards. This was followed by the Chinese, Japanese and Russian abacus and finally the teaching abacus. Whether the Chinese took over the Roman bead frame or invented it independently is unclear. It is also uncertain whether the Japanese abacus derives from the Chinese. The bead frames were used for centuries, but today they have largely disappeared. You could calculate on that very quickly. Addition and subtraction are comparatively simple. Multiplication, repeated addition, and division, repeated subtraction, more difficult. With beads. Addition and subtraction can be traced back to counting. In the Roman hand abacus, one should actually speak of buttons and not of beads. The world's water resources are under increasing threat from the impacts of climate change, population growth, and pollution. As the global population grows, a persistent challenge is how to access enough water to meet humanity's needs while also preserving the integrity of aquatic ecosystems. The Pacific Institute works on water resource issues around the globe, collaborating with stakeholders to ensure communities in nature have the water they need to thrive now and in the future. Internationally, the Institute promotes source water protection and green infrastructure solutions in order to increase the climate resiliency of water systems and improve ecosystem function. The Institute collects, catalogues, and shares good practice examples of nature-based solutions, 
catalyzes investment in green infrastructure projects, and connects stakeholders with a common interest in advancing nature-based solutions. India is the second largest onion growing country in the world. Indian onions are famous for their pungency and are available round the year. Indian onions have two crop cycles, first harvesting starts in November to January and the second harvesting from January to May. The onion is a hardy cool season biennial but usually grown as annual crop. The onion has narrow, hollow leaves and a base which enlarges to form a bulb. The bulb can be white, yellow, or add and require 80 to 150 days to reach harvest. The major onion producing states are Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, Gujarat, Rajasthan, Bihar, Andhra Pradesh, Haryana, West Bengal, Uttar Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Odisha, Tamil Nadu, Jharkhand and Telangana in the country. By definition, tissues are absent from unicellular organisms. Even among the simplest multicellular species, such as sponges, tissues are lacking or are poorly differentiated. But multicellular animals and plants that are more advanced have specialized tissues that can organize and regulate an organism's response to its environment. There are four basic tissue types defined by their morphology and function, epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. The cheetah is the world's fastest land mammal. With acceleration that would leave most automobiles in the dust, a cheetah can go from 0 to 60 miles an hour in only 3 seconds. These big cats are quite nimble at high speed and can make quick and sudden turns in pursuit of prey. Before unleashing their speed, cheetahs use exceptionally keen eyesight to scan their grassland environment for signs of prey, especially antelope and hares. This big cat is a daylight hunter that benefits from stealthy movement and a distinctive spotted coat that allows it to blend easily into high, dry grasses. When the moment is right a cheetah will sprint after its quarry and attempt to knock it down. Such chases cost the hunter a tremendous amount of energy and are usually over in less than a minute. If successful, the cheetah will often drag its kill to a shady hiding place to protect it from opportunistic animals that sometimes steal a kill before the cheetah can eat. Cheetahs need only drink once every three to four days. Bacteria can be aerobic, anaerobic, or facultative anaerobes. These terms describe how they respond to oxygen. Aerobic bacteria need oxygen to live. Anaerobic bacteria will die around oxygen. Facultative anaerobes function best with oxygen but do not need it. Some bacteria are good for you, including the bacteria in your digestive system, or gut. 
These bacteria help to break down food and keep you healthy. Other good bacteria can produce oxygen are used to create antibiotics. Bacteria are used in food production to make yogurt and fermented foods. The ecosystem relies on bacteria to function properly. For example, bacteria break down dead matter in the environment, like dead leaves, releasing carbon dioxide and nutrients in the process. Without the release of carbon dioxide, plants are unable to grow. Different GM, genetically modified, organisms include different genes inserted in different ways. This means that individual GM foods and their safety should be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis and that it is not possible to make general statements on the safety of all GM foods. GM foods currently available on the international market have passed safety assessments and are not likely to present risks for human health. In addition, no effects on human health have been shown as a result of the consumption of such foods by the general population in the countries where they have been approved. Continuous application of safety assessments based on the Codex Alimentarius principles and, where appropriate, adequate post-market monitoring, should form the basis for ensuring the safety of GM foods. In the subsequent 20 years, two major advances have been made. The first is independent confirmation that the observed acceleration is a real effect. This confirmation has come from several different avenues, in particular the baryonic acoustic oscillations, BAOs, in the CMB. These oscillations originate from the early universe, less than 380,000 years after the Big Bang, when space was filled with an ocean of plasma dense enough to allow acoustic waves to oscillate through. The sound waves had peaks and troughs represented by hot and cold spots, the anisotropies, in the CMB, and shared a characteristic wavelength. Over the eons the hot spots became the nucleation sites for matter to condense into galaxies and, as the universe expanded, so did the characteristic wavelength. Today, the average distribution of galaxies reflects the size of the bayos in the CMB. Just as type IA supernovae are standard candles, so BAOs are standard rulers by which to measure the expansion of the universe. They support the finding that the expansion is accelerating.